from the circle of breath at the head of the tunnel. You've heard, felt, and seen the light at the end of the tunnel. Didgeridoo, primordial sound of creation. Mm, sounding the breath of infinite being hurling through eternity and waking up the universe in your body, mind, heart, and soul, activating your first eye, calling you home and making you whole. And we wanna deepen our relationship with that single eye. It's time to morph from calling it third eye and to the deeper name, which is first eye. That eye is first before the two eyes. See, and not third after. <laughs> See, Holy Scripture says, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. If therefore thine eye be single, not if therefore thine eye be three. <laughs> now, third eye is not wrong. It's just not the deeper name. It's a surface name. See, third eye is like being invited into someone's home and you're a pretty good friend and they'll visit with you in the living room. First eye is being invited into somebody's home and you're such a good friend. You know, you're going somewhere and they're still getting ready. You can come in the bedroom and sit on the bed while they finish getting ready. That's first eye. See, it's a, it's a more intimate vibration. And speaking of the resonance of intimacy, Intimacy into me see, intimacy into me see, into me see, intimacy into me see, intimacy. So if you're not having a sacred dance with intimacy, you're not seeing as deeply within as you could. Time to let go of being afraid of our feeling nature. We live in a society that trains us away from our feelings. Somebody starts to cry. What did they say? Oh, don't cry. That's the pretense. I care about you. Don't cry. But what are they saying many times? You're making me very uncomfortable. Please stop crying. 
See, we live in a society that trains us away from our feelings, which is like training us away from our creator. See, you experience God, God, goddess, absolute, through your feelings, not your mind, not your thoughts. The mind can articulate about what went down, but it goes down at a feeling level. So it's time to own your feelings, see? I remember being in a seminar many years ago called Omega Vector, it was down in Phoenix. I stood up before a group of about 50 people <clears throat> sharing a part of my life. And I was just sobbing. And for the first time, I cried those tears with absolute dignity. I knew that they weren't weak. In fact, I knew that they were an expression of strength because I was being true to the reality of that moment. The weakness would have been had I pushed them down. But I was true to the reality of that moment. So now whenever I cry, I take a tear from each cheek. And I always taste my tears. See, that's my gesture. Oh, I feel so good. Oh, my God. You know how good I'm feeling. You be dancing all around. <laughs> now I'm giving you some. <laughs> But I taste my tears as a gesture of accepting what I'm feeling, when I'm feeling it. But the other thing, when you ingest your tears, your tears are coated with information that helps you more deeply understand what you're feeling in that now moment. Tears are coated with information. They're like a baptism of the soul. Yes. So when you cry, you know, always taste those tears. Yeah, because that, that's, that's like an elixir. It's like manna. See? So when I finished that seminar, I wrote this poem. I'm going to dedicate it to you. The title, and it's in my book. I brought some of my books. The book is Miraculous Song of Ascension. However, this poem is called From Stinking Thinking, to revealing feeling. So, the things I know by what I think <clears throat> are partly good and they partly stink. <laughs> now, not a bad start, but partly sealed. Truth of the head is half revealed. What was the bid when I was a little kid? If I want to be smart, and learn it by heart. What a dread when I learned it by head, but in all my learning, I woke up dead. How can my truth be alive and real unless it's truth that I can feel? Down the highway of ignorance and strife, mere thinking was at the wheel of my life. Intellect was wheeling and dealing, but now, I'm chauffeured by my feeling. I don't mind showing what's inside. We are all one. Why should I hide? When I do from me, I steal. But I can't heal what I won't reveal. And I can't heal what I'm unwilling to feel. So life, mother of all good things, thanks for the wisdom feeling brings. In feeling, there's nothing new except that which I always knew, from stinking thinking to revealing feeling. Let's all open up and have a healing. in your feelings yes. because it's a reflection of the authenticity mm. of you in that now moment mm. and we want to honor that 
And that's the access code to God. Because we experience God through feeling. See, see, the, the thinking is more of an alignment with, with doing. Thinking is objective. See, it's out there. See, feeling is subjective. It's in here. It's a subjective vibration. And it is the inwardness that gives us access to create a source. Now, the mind can articulate about it, but it goes down at a feeling level. And if feeling and thinking were siblings, feeling is the elder sibling. Now, we're taught totally different. We don't have feelings 101 in the school system, but the power is in the feelings. Another thing that makes feelings so powerful is that because feelings are inward, feelings are the seat of being. Thinking is the seat of doing. So, you know, life purpose. We all we want to do that life purpose, right? Now, what's my life purpose? What am I meant to do? Oh, God, don't let my life be over before I fulfill my life purpose. And the cosmic joke is... You've been fulfilling your life purpose since the beginning, let's begin. Now, the, the fulfillment of life purpose is like unto the ways of the universe. And the universe is in a state of eternal expansion. See, that's what life purpose is. That's what being is. See, that's why we have to let go of the false sense of perfection. Perfection is not a destination. It's an eternal journey. And every step in the journey is a perfect step, but not always a favorite step. Every chapter in the book of your life is a perfect chapter, though not always a favorite chapter. There are some things that are absolutely not our favorite, and yet they are perfectly intended to be for us at that time to facilitate transformation and growth. So when you're resonating with this thing called perfection, just know that the only real path, come on, smile with me one time. The only, real, the only real path to perfection is perfect acceptance. That's perfection. When you perfectly accept the good, the bad, and the ugly, now, when I say accept the bad and ugly, it's a matter of allowing because if you go to the center of the bad and the ugly, you're going to find the light. You're going to find the I and the I am of the storm. See, the center, the center of everything is the I and the I am of the storm. Now, we've all heard about those raging, violent tornadoes and hurricanes. They always have what is called the I of the storm. And the eye of the storm is a place of pristine peace in the middle of all of that turbulent, violent wind. That is that place that is invincible, invisible, and invulnerable, and immune to all of that crazy turbulence. Like we have, we have a disturbance in the force of our world right now. We have a lot of turbulence going on. But beloved, you want to be in the eye and the I am of the storm. That's your inner divinity. That's the heaven within you. That is the place that is invincible, invisible, and invulnerable to all of that craziness out there. See? The I and the I am of the storm. And everything has it. Every person has an I and an I am of the storm. Every situation has an I and an I am of the storm. Because the center is the uncontaminatable place where only God dwells. And whatever God is, you're a little one of those. But a qualitative little one of those. See, you are a qualitative expression of God. God is absolute. See, you are a soul in the body of the universe and the universe is a galaxy in the body of your soul. <laughs> 